Hey there, this is Corey with CrossFit Rampage. This is something that's been on my mind for a little while. I wanted to make a video about it, just breaking down the mechanics of the toes to bar. So, a couple things I first want to lay out are some terms, some things just to understand with how we should be moving, uh, a few prerequisites of what you want, and then we'll break down the rhythm, the tempo, how we go about doing it once we're actually hanging from the pull-up bar. Uh, then we'll go over a few different styles and who those styles are for and when you should try to do those things. So first, starting off, I've got a little diagram here. When someone's standing up, there's a natural curve of their low back. If we hinge forward at the hip, we have hip flexion which would look like this. So essentially anything you're taught to do when you're lifting a barbell or any other movement in CrossFit, CrossFit basically, when this stays static and you move amongst the hip joint. Now, in the toes to bar movement, we're not trying to maintain a flat or arched low back while the hips go into flexion. We're instead going to allow the low back to round and you're gonna have a decent amount of spinal flexion, okay? So we've got hip flexion that's keeping the back flat, hinging just at the hip, and then we've got spinal flexion where you're hinging, where you can be hinging at the hip, not in this diagram though, and you're flexing at the low back. If we put both of those together, we can look and see something like these pictures over here. You've got the lumbar or spinal flexion, and you have hip flexion as well. So a couple things that we would like to see as a prerequisite in order for you to be able to get your toes to the bar. And I wouldn't say these are in any specific order, although they are numbered, that doesn't necessarily apply. You pretty much need to have all three of these. We've got to have some amount of strength. We have to have some strength in the upper body, in the lats, so that you can pull yourself back away from the bar a little bit. We're also gonna need strength on the lower half throughout the trunk, the abdominals, more so the hip flexors. So the hip flexors right here in the front of the hip responsible for lifting your legs up. So in both of these pictures where our little stick guy is touching the bar, you're noticing that his upper body, his shoulders are pulled back behind the bar on both of them. So if we had a vertical line going down, His head and shoulders are behind the bar. The strength required to do that comes through the lats. You've gotta be able to pull yourself back at least a little bit. The amount you need to be able to pull yourself back is kinda of determined by how flexible your hamstrings are. So when we're talking about flexibility, most people don't have an issue flexing or rounding their low back. Now some do. If you do a toe touch and your back stays very flat, even if you try to round it, then this is gonna be kind of difficult for you because we need this curve right here, all right? Also, hamstring flexibility. Go ahead, try a standing straight leg toe touch. If you cannot touch your toes, your hamstrings aren't very flexible. Now, obviously, there's a low back and hip component into that as well. But if we do the test lying on the floor with our hands overhead, it's gonna cause, a, or it's gonna determine that we can't actually hinge back and get our toes to touch our hands where the bar would be without bending our knees. Here's a look at that. So if we have decent low back flexion, decent hamstring flexibility, and some upper body strength, we should be able to pull back and lift up and get our toes to the bar. Now, that's all good for one rep, but what about doing multiple reps? We're gonna need some sense of coordination and tempo. First, you really need to understand the hollow and arch positions, okay? So, this is a good warm-up drill to do. Just work on a long, tight, squeeze together hollow and arch, and then, coming off of the hollow will turn into the kind of hip flexion, if you will, spinal flexion, and lifting the toes up. 
So let's break this down on the pull-up bar. Also do a few tests and see what we're gonna need here. All right guys, so let's talk about the hollow swing. Okay, so we're thinking about hanging from the pull-up bar and creating a hollow position and then swinging or kipping your body into an arch position. So let's see what this would look like first. And then we're gonna break down how to go about doing this because this is kind of the foundation of learning the toes to bar and keeping a rhythm without kind of getting out of sync. So here would be what we would call a hollow swing or a hollow to arch. Okay, so what we're doing is we're essentially going in and out on a center axis. What you don't want is the pendulum where your entire body swings in front, your entire body swings behind. Instead, what's happening is while some of your body is in front of this imaginary line, some of your body is behind it. And then as, let's say for example, your feet drift forward, you have to pull your upper body back. So you're always kind of 50-50. You're never all the way on one side of the line. So here's how we would think about doing this movement. First, let's talk about just from the waist down, okay? All we're gonna do is hang from the bar, don't worry about doing anything with your upper body except holding on, and let's just see if we can get the legs swinging forward and back. Again, no upper body action here. So the legs just start swinging. Okay, so that's a good start, but that's not enough because that's not gonna give me enough height to get my toes to the bar if I'm just at a dead hang. So now, let's think about the top half of the movement. If I'm standing tall and my feet are planted on the ground and I crunch, I bend forward. However, if I take my feet off the ground and I'm hanging, that same crunch actually lifts me up. So that would look like this. Okay, so now I've got some movement going on kind of through the trunk or midsection, the lumbar spine, if you will. So now let's think about as I crunch, I'm gonna lift the legs up just a little bit. And then as I come off of that crunch, I extend, the legs come behind me. So now it starts to look like this. Okay, so it looks similar to before, but it's a little bit bigger, all right? Now what we're gonna think about is adding in a pull through the lats, okay? So think about closing the armpit, all right? As we showed earlier, you need to be able to dead hang and pull yourself back. The stronger you are at that movement, the easier this is gonna be. So let's show that one more time, looks like this. Okay, so that's without momentum. Now, when the legs swing forward, because I'm crunching, I'm also going to pull back. Or you might think of it as a press down, whatever works for you. So let's see what that's gonna look like. Putting those together. So now I've got more height on the front end. Now to really make this bigger, more dynamic, to help keep that rhythm, to get our toes all the way up, we also have to think about the arch or the back swing. So now as my feet are pulling back, I need to press my chest and head forward. So when putting it all together, it's gonna look like this. Notice, I'm always moving about that center line. As the feet drift back, I'm pushing the chest forward and then you immediately have to go into the opposition. So that is how you're gonna start the hollow swing or the hollow to arch position. And then we're gonna turn this into the toes to bar. All right guys, so here are a few ways to determine how much you're gonna to have to bend the knees in order to actually get your toes to the bar and what style that you're gonna to need to do. Now what this doesn't take into account is strength, all right? Once hanging from the bar, gravity's pulling you down. Lying flat on the floor, it's a lot easier to move. So just because you have the flexibility here doesn't mean that you're gonna be able to get your toes to the bar. So that is safe for the drills we're gonna go over on the pull-up bar. So first and foremost, we're gonna grab a PVC pipe, pretend as if this is the bar. 
First test, just lay all the way back, arms overhead, bodies in a straight line. Then we're gonna see if we can, with straight legs, roll all the way back and physically touch your toes to this bar. So that's gonna look like so. All right, preferably not with a hat on. So if we can do that, we already know my hamstrings are long enough, my low back can flex enough that I might be able to do a toast bar if I have enough strength. Now let's pretend as if we weren't able to do that and we get stuck. Now what we're gonna need to do is bend the knee until we can get to the bar. And if we can't, we'll show that in a moment. There, so I had to bend the knee a little bit in order to get there. Now, when we're hanging from the bar, we've talked about having that pull back component, the strength through the lats. What that does, it gets the bar closer to your feet. Now, obviously we wanna minimize this if we're going for speed and a lot of reps, but if you're just trying to get some toes to bar, we need to know everything that's gonna help us. So now, we don't necessarily need to try this with our arms straight up, let's see what it looks like when we put the bar in front of us a little bit. So all you're gonna do is lift the bar up about six to 10 inches, then see if you can get your toes to the bar. So from here, I'm just gonna lift the bar up, then I can get my toes to the bar. Maybe we still can't do it then, and I have to bend the knees. So I'm straight leg and I can't get it, and I bend the knees. So from this position, we now know if I'm going to do a toes to bar when hanging from the bar, I'm not gonna get away with being straight up and down. I'm gonna need to be forward. All right, these are your drills on the floor. And now you've gotta have this along with the drills hanging from the bar. All right, so you've got your hollow swing or hollow to arch nailed. Now let's see how this starts to transition into getting your toes up. So the first thing we wanna do is off of that hollow swing on the front end, we're gonna do what I would just call a chair sit. You're just gonna pull your knees up to 90 degrees. Looks like this. Starts with the hollow swing, and then we're just gonna go knees up, knees up, knees up, okay? So the feet still drop down and swing back, but on the front end, just tuck those knees up. Now what we wanna start doing is see if we can pull down a little bit more and lean back some. Now again, if you are more flexible, you have to lean back less. If you're less flexible, you have to lean back more. So let's add a little bit of lean back. And now we're gonna think, tuck those knees just a touch higher, maybe more so kind of towards your armpit shoulder area. That looks like this. Okay, so I'm leaning quite back. You can see by my ear in relation to my arm as it comes pretty far back. So this is already a good scale for a toes to bar if we don't end up being able to get our toes all the way up. Now what we're gonna do, as I've leaned back, right when my knees reach their highest point, I'm just gonna try to extend the leg or karate kick, if you will, and see if those toes can't get all the way up to the bar. So let's see what that would look like. I'm gonna start with the knee raise, and then the knee raise with a little lean back, and then we'll try to do the kick. Okay, so a little bit of a lean back, knees come up, kick. If we have very tight hamstrings and trouble flexing here, we're gonna need to pull back even harder, so we might have to do a few big swings to get that going. That may look a little more like this. Okay, so I'm trying to overemphasize the pulling back. All right, now let's say we're really flexible. We're not gonna need to pull back as much, and we can work with a little straighter leg. So let's see the process of that. A little straighter leg on a leg lift looks like this. Okay, now from there, all we have to do is use the strength of our hip flexors, the momentum of the swing, 
and continue lifting those feet up and try to get to the bar. Again, you are not going to be able to make this variation of the toes to bar happen if you have very tight hamstrings and or low back. So here's what this would look like if you are flexible enough. So that's going to be your go-to if you're flexible enough because then you don't have to have a whole lot of pull back. You still need some to keep your rhythm about the 50%, 50% rule. Some of you is behind the bar while the rest is in front. Now let's talk about how you're going to do multiple reps. Right after your toes touch the bar, you need to quickly get them out of there. You need to pull them down and get them on the back side of this line as we drive the chest through. Because if not, you end up with too much of your mass on one side of the bar, and then we just have this pendulum. So right after my toes touch, I want to think, pull down, pull down. So let's see that. Pull down, pull down, pull down, okay? That keeps you in rhythm. Let's see what it looks like if we don't pull down our toes in time. Now I'm automatically swinging because I left them up there and my hip waist area shifted under the bar. So once we have the ability to do the toes to bar, it's important you work on pulling the feet down and back driving the upper body forward just enough to maintain your rhythm, all right? So from here, let's talk about one other style, or rather, two other styles we might see. If we're going for speed, it's a short workout, you don't have a whole lot of volume in reps, and you just need to get on and off the bar and move on to the next thing. This will work if you're very, very flexible and you have a lot of strength for the hip flexor abdominal region. This requires almost no pull back. There's almost no shift forward and back. It's just a shoot the feet down, shoot the feet up. Now I caution you about this in competition because the line where the feet are gonna go is gonna be very close to what the common standard is of pulling the feet back. So try to shoot them back at an angle. This version for speed is gonna look like so. So I'm literally trying to stay in a straight line, kick up, pull down, kick up, pull down. If we have tension in the hamstrings, that option's not gonna be there for you, okay? And that's fine. We're just gonna have to pull back a little bit more we're gonna have to bend the knees a little bit, all right? One other option you may see is what we would call like a reverse bicycle kick. So pay attention to the feet at the bottom. So instead of shooting them down and up, I'm kind of pushing them back and going in a circle motion to bring them back up. That's gonna be a little more long lasting, if you will, than the straight down and up. And it's still a little faster than the big swing, 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 swing. So we call that like a reverse bicycle. That's not really something I would spend a lot of time practicing. Rather just work on the traditional back and forth. And if you start to figure this out, then it might be a plan B in a workout for you. I know that was a pretty deep analysis of the toes bar and everything that goes into it, but it is one of those skill movements that when doing CrossFit, a lot of people really want to do and they just don't know how, especially in regards to keeping the rhythm and doing more than one at a time. Definitely don't allow yourself to be the person doing singles forever. You're going to maximize your efficiency in a workout if you learn how to do multiple reps. Guys, thank you for watching. Keep a lookout for more videos like this to come.